with Brian Shumpert, Brent Hubbs, VolQuest.com. We'll call this a little around the horn on the Tennessee baseball front as the Volunteers take this series against Georgia 2-1, to one, winning the rubber game on this Sunday by a score of 4-1. to one. Ryan, let's talk about this series. Uh, big for Tennessee to get the series win on the road. Maybe a missed opportunity for a sweep, however. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you, you can never complain about a SEC series win, especially on the road. You look back at it, you were one out, maybe an error or two away from getting that win on Saturday and really having a, a dominant weekend over Georgia. I think Georgia just led for like three at bats the whole, whole weekend. So Tennessee really controlled the whole series, let one slip away, but you can't complain about a, a road, road series win, especially when it's the first opening SEC series win since 2014 for this team. Yeah, and you look at him in Tennessee now, 17-4, and four, as you talked about um, in our preview on Friday, did not play your traditional preseason schedule, so you weren't sure exactly what you had. Georgia maybe a little false sense of where they were. Tennessee's bats came out rocking on Friday night. Uh, and then, again, with the exception of the ninth inning on Saturday, Tennessee's pitching was really good all weekend long. Yeah, it was, and it was a clean weekend, too, for the defense. We talked about that a little bit on Thursday or Friday, whenever that was, but – Behind the pitchers, the defense was really good, especially today. A couple of times when Blade Tidwell was, I don't, wouldn't even say reeling, but maybe just in a little bit of trouble. Guys made good plays behind them. Liam Spence was really consistent all weekend. But just the pitching overall, really, really good. You got what you needed from your starter every single game. Chad Dallas's numbers won't look good Friday, but he ate up two innings, you know, when Tennessee had a big lead, saved some in a bullpen. And then Will Heflin just got him to Mark McLaughlin there on Saturday, gave Tennessee – a lead and a chance to win. And that's, that's really what they're looking for from that third starter in Heflin right now. Do you think that Heflin stays as the Saturday guy, or is there a chance he goes to Sunday given what Tidwell gave Tennessee? I mean, Tidwell goes seven and a third on this Sunday for the four, one win Dallas goes th six and a third on Friday night. Heflin just three and a third. Could you see them maybe moving Tidwell up a day and becoming more by committee on Sunday? Or do you think that, that Tony Vitello kind of likes maybe that Saturday a bit more by committee um, and, and then Sunday hoping Tidwell can eat up some innings for you. I would say it seems like he likes that by committee on Saturday because Tidwell started the year starting on Saturdays and he didn't do anything on to get him demoted or anything like that. He pitched well on Saturdays in Tennessee, decided to make that change next week. I don't know. I think it's still kind of fluid what they're going to do with that spot when it's going to be Saturday or Sunday. But for right now, it does seem like they kind of like Tidwell on, on Sunday and then, piecing it together on Saturday. 26 strikeouts, just six walks on the weekend. I know that's the, the Coach Anderson way, throw strikes and, and keep the ball in play. They have to be elated with that number, though, for the opening weekend in SEC play. Yeah, I, I mean, absolutely. You, I mean, you really can't be much better than that. Did not give Georgia anything easy all weekend. Georgia pretty good in the top of their lineup, not great on the bottom. Tennessee didn't give the bottom of the lineup anything easy made it hard on Georgia, made him earn everything. And like I said, just a, a, a few tough defensive plays that could have gone the other way and Tennessee would have had, had the series sweep. All right, let's talk about the offense. They get out of the gates fast on Friday night, the grand slam. They had a home run to open the game. Um, settled down at – Georgia settled – pitching settled down a little bit. But still, Tennessee's bats – uh, we're, we're good. I mean, when, when you look at the fact that, that they scored 19 runs this weekend, um, not, a, not a bad day, great night on Friday night, maybe not the best day on Saturday, but still some pretty quality at-bats it looks like for this lineup. Yeah, and you really saw it from just about everyone. I mean, I think Evan Russell struggled a little bit on the weekend, but besides that, one game, you know, at least someone gave him something every single time out. Drew Gilbert was hitless going into Sunday, but had given good at-bats, had a three-hit game on Sunday, kind of broke out of it. So you're seeing him start to get contributions from everyone. And then Jake Rucker was, was the big, big breakout star of the weekend, had just one homer in non-conference play. We kind of talked about that. That was the one thing, the guy you expected to hit more homers. He comes out, hits two homers, two huge homers in the first two games of SEC play, had a really big weekend. Really only concerning thing is they didn't hit very well with runners in scoring position, just 7 to 35 on the weekend, both on Saturday and then again today on Sunday. They had some chances early in the game to push the lead and kind of maybe not put Georgia away, but make it a lot easier where they can maybe coast a little bit more down the stretch. They weren't able to do that. It came back to bite them Saturday, but obviously Sunday they were able to get big insurance run in the eighth inning, get a three-run lead, and the pitching was really, really good, both the starters and then Kirby Connell and Camden Sewell out of the bullpen. Yeah, they've got, they've got to finish when they have the opportunity, you know, with runners in scoring position. That's just great, great stat. And 
uh, something I know that, that Coach Vitello and, and his staff will be talking about this week. Speaking of this week, another opportunity comes calling for Tennessee in, in week two of the SEC play. We talked about this in the preview. You had it uh, in, in your preview as well. Tennessee's got to make some hay early in this SEC season. Opportunity comes about with an LSU team that still seems to be finding their way right now. Yeah, and it's an LSU team that's, you know, there's five teams in SEC ranked in the top five right now. And then there's that kind of second group, Tennessee, South Carolina, LSU, that those two, those three teams are going to be fighting for one or two regional host spots. So you're going to go up against a team that's really competing for the same thing that you are. LSU hasn't been quite as good this year as they are in past years, still in the top 25. The pitching has really been the question mark for them. That's gotten them in some struggles this time. Gave up, I think, 24 earlier in the season, a weekend game to Oral Roberts. Dropped two out of three to Mississippi State this weekend, but we're able to salvage the series with a win on, win on Sunday. And the series has been very bad for Tennessee historically against LSU. So certainly not something that's going to be easy, but an opportunity at home for Tennessee to get another, another series win and really start moving things in the right direction before they kind of hit the gauntlet of Florida and Vanderbilt there in the middle of conference play. As we wrap it up, we talked about the, the number of guys they left on base, but if you're Tony Vitello and you roll into practice on Monday, midweek and, and weekend things coming up are you set do you feel good about where you're at do you I mean, obviously you want to continue to build depth but what, what's what's priorities one and two you think for, for this club now that he's got a chance to see them in league play I think it's a little bit of it's just developing bringing some of the young pitchers along now Camden Sewell he's a junior now but he hasn't thrown a whole lot this year missed time last year due to injury really good sign what you saw from him Sunday he's struggled a little bit with really solid so I think bringing guys like him, Mark McLaughlin, Kirby Connell, both sophomores, bringing them along, getting more comfort level for them. And then I think in the, like we were talking about, the lineup's pretty set. I think you need to try to get more out of Evan Russell out of his spot. Maybe see some Christian Scott there, maybe see some Kyle Booker there, see if they can take an opportunity in the midweek. And then I think it's getting rest up a little bit. Connor Pavoloni started all three games behind the plate, was getting beat up a little bit. So I'm sure he'll have the midweek off, get Jackson Greer, Greer some reps and, get everybody healthy and, and ready to go for another big weekend series. That's Ryan Shepard as we go around, or we go around the horn here on week one, as Tennessee gets the road win ser series, win over Georgia LSU comes calling next. We'll have full coverage in the Monday three, two, one. We'll also uh, have a preview for you for LSU or a little podcast as well. So plenty of baseball coverage coming up for you for Ryan Shepard. I'm Brent hubs, ballquest.com. <laughs>